This heavy metal business is really, really important, and it doesn't get enough playtime. It is totally under the radar for most doctors, and it is an epidemic. Our own DNR is now prohibiting all children and women of childbearing age from eating from our street, streams, creeks, and lakes here in Michigan more than once or twice a year, as far as fish goes. And why would they want to do that? They know that kids who are rapidly developing and they start assuming this heavy metal burden, which unfortunately all of our fish are now contaminated with, it has a huge effect on a lot of things. If mom has been exposed to mercury, for instance, it is unbelievable what an impact that has on her offspring. It has this entire diffuse effect. If you and I are exposed to mercury, for instance, right now, it has very specific effects, very measurable. But if mom is exposed and then becomes pregnant, say five years later, there's this entire developmental effect. Stress response becomes very abnormal. The adrenals don't develop like they should. IQ will be lowered very significantly. <coughs> the chances of the child develop autism or autistic spectrum disorder is up incredibly. And I can go on and on and on. And it's a very difficult thing to prove, but we know this is true from the animal model and also from uh, some of the accidents that has happened in this world. There was this huge accident, mercury-wise, that mercury got spilled into the lake in Japan, and um, we were able to measure its effects for decades thereafter. And that this is where all that knowledge comes from. It was an absolute tragedy that uh, didn't really result in fatalities as much as development of disorders, infertility, and incredible host of health problems. Some of the most common complaints are problems with memory and our communication. Okay, it's number one. This is an important one because Alzheimer's is becoming more and more and more prevalent. I don't know if you remember from when you were little, the age it would become somewhat forgetful, right? A generation or two ago. Um, but Alzheimer's hitting at 50, 55, you just did not see that. It's hitting so many people now. And I'm currently, and so is Dr. Stacy, working on patients like that. Muscle and or joint pain. Anxiety and insomnia, those two together. Depression. Depression is epidemic. We have never measured levels like we are today. Stomach, bowel, and bladder complaints. Food and chemical sensitivities. Interesting uh, study was done at Harvard where just a tiny bit of mercury gas was put in a rat's cage just to see what would happen. And they found that their sensitivities to other things went up five-fold. In other words, it took this much to make a food lethal, uh, some sort of poisonous food. Normally, it put a little, little bit of mercury gas, just barely perceptible, only one-fifth of that food would then kill. So it just increases your sensitivity so much to foods. This might be partially why there's so many kids that come to us that have all these food sensitivities. Sometimes we don't know where to start. We just got a blood test in this last week. And of the 88 foods that I tested, blood work wise, she was okay with only four foods. The, the, whole, the whole thing was just colored and we couldn't help but just burst out into laughter when we both looked at it. You know, what else are you going to do? It's, it's not funny at all, but it's, it's just unbelievable. And this gal had leaky gut syndrome associated with heavy metals. Yeah, and we've been working on that. So, numbness and tingling. So these are the unexplained paresthesias, we call that. This is where a nervous system is on fire and it does weird things. And uh, uh, a lot of these get misdiagnosed, by the way, as MS and syndromes like that. It doesn't have to be that at all. Eye symptoms. But really, what happens with heavy metals in general? You get increased oxidative damage. What is oxidative damage? It's happening to my car right now, and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, my car is uh, about eight, almost nine years old now, and um, it 
it is being attacked by oxidative damage. And uh, I actually took it to the dealer a few weeks ago. I said, look at this rust. And they said, yeah. But I said, I watch it every week. What's happening is oxygen is binding to the metal, and it's changing the metal to rust. That occurs to us also. Oxygen is toxic. It binds to our cells and changes function. This is how we get wrinkles. That's oxidative damage. That's rust. Things contract, shrink, just change its form. <clears throat> so you get increased aging, basically. Mitochondrial dysfunction. This is a huge one. This is maybe the biggest one of them all. Mitochondria, what is that? Nance Armstrong just placed 12th in the Tour of Italy. He just finished it, which is an incredible feat because he just broke his collarbone a month and a half ago. And here he goes in his two and a half week race and placed 12th in the world. How does Nance do that? This fella is getting old. He does that because he has lots of mitochondria. Mitochondria are the little fuel cells within each cell that powers us. He happens to be genetically inclined to have a lot in his muscles. It just he was born with that. It's not all genetic, obviously. It's careful planning, training, good food, all that. It does not take away anything from what, he, what he's doing. But he's genetically inclined that way. It gives his muscles lots and lots of energy. So it's not just in muscles, though. This is what fuels our brain cells. This is what fuels our nervous system, our mucous membranes, everything. So mitochondria dysfunction can affect us in multiple ways. Fatigue, enzymes that fuel digestion go awry. All the enzymatic pathways that fuel life go awry. And luckily, God created us with lots of backup systems. So we kick in the backup system, make it work. That one then gets shut down by heavy metals. And another backup system kicks in. It's amazing how many backup systems we have. But you know what? Every time we kick in another backup system, it goes to a less efficient one. And yes, we can still function. But we are going from thriving mode to just surviving mode. Slowly on, you grind to a halt. All your life goes down slower and slower and slower. And what happens in patients, for instance, with autism, it seems to be more selective in areas. Instead of this general thing, it affects you more in the gut wall. And it affects you more in the nervous system cells. And creates havoc with the communication pathways. So instead of a simple, uh, simple communication pathway, you get multiple pathways, which becomes a whole confusing mess, which is often why an autistic child shuts down, because it's just an overwhelming array of information that comes at you. Yeah? It's almost like short circuiting. And that's because the mitochondria in the nervous system is not working well. And those of you that have been here before with seminars know that the gut and brain talk together. So if this is off also, there you have uh, an issue there as well. Cell death, increased production of free radicals, that goes with the oxidative damage. It decreases the availability of antioxidants, so the blueberries you might be having for breakfast is gonna be less effective because you cannot utilize it when you've been having heavy metal, so you might be doing all the good things in life. It's not affecting you nearly as much as it would your neighbor. Reduces glutathione content of the body. This is our main Detoxifying molecule. It is a big one. So not only are we dealing with all those things, all of a sudden our detoxifying ability goes down as well. And vascular inflammation and thrombosis. We think that a lot of heart disease is actually heavy metal damage. We're going to go through a whole bunch of them. Dr. Stacy picked out the most important ones. And I think this information is critical. After Dr. Stacy's gone through those, then what we're going to do is go into what do we do about it.